the name of Almighty Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad, peace be upon him, narrated, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Taim So Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make this channel a grand success. We are partner of family. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert our challenges into opportunities and opportunity into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into validation in the world by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Today I'm going to discuss my lecture number fifth, light FCC gasoline extraction and sweetening unit, governing a pathway, delivering on a commitment, differentiated performance, enabling profit optimization process lecture number fifth. Before my lecture, I used to read a Quranic verse. Kala Rabbi Shrahli Sadri Bo Yas Sarli Amri Wahlalu Okdatum Milli Sari Yafka Kali Allahumma Rabbi Zitni Ilma. O my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me, and I lose a nod from my tongue that they may understand my sin. Allahumma Rabbi Zitni Ilma, O Allah, advance me in my knowledge and true understanding. Okay, light, abscessic gasoline extraction and sweetening unit, lecture number fifth, normal. Operation. Key takeaway points from lecture number fifth, normal operation and process optimization. Okay, today we are going to discuss a various aspects associated with the normal operation of the light FCC, gasoline extraction and sweetening unit, which include operations guidelines and unit of op process optimization. The proper operating of the liquid liquid extractions Marax unit depends almost entirely upon two factors. Number one, caustic quality control and optimization of the extracted operating parameters. Obtaining a maximum mercaptan extractions requires a keeping the circulated caustic properties, as we are going to discuss. Number one, appearance olive green to blue, percent spent and to 20. Total alkalinity that will be should be less than one weight percent. Total sulfur and mercaptide sulfur 100 a ppm. Sulfide sulfur less than one ppm. Sulfide sulfur 150 to 100 ppm. Sodium carbonate 1 to 5 weight percent. Marax catalyst 50 to 500 ppm. Okay, first, a caustic saturant. The ability to extract a mercaptan depends upon the caustic concentration or specifically the concentration of non neutralized or a free sodium hydroxide. For optimal mercaptan extractions, circulating caustic or total alkalinity of 6 to 8 weight percent is recommended for clean or caustic solution. The corresponding solution gravity is 9 to 12, 1.06 to 1.09 specific gravity. Operation at low caustic concentration will reduce extraction efficiency. The minimum caustic concentration requires will vary somewhat from until 2 unit. Depending on operation, since the mercaptan oxidation reactions produce water, the circulated caustic will dilute over a time and lower the concentration of the free sodium hydroxide and will require a replacement of a portion of the caustic with a fresh caustic that is 1.2 specific gravity. Spent caustic is normally withdrawn from the regenerated caustic stream which contains only a small amount of mercaptite and sulfide sulfur as opposed to the mercraft loaded RH caustic from the extractor. Okay, next is the spent catalyst, percentage of the spent catalyst. The circulated caustic is also limited to 20% spent since the ability to extract mercaptan depends upon the concentration of the non neutralized or free sodium hydroxide in the caustic solution. Percent spent is determined by using UOP method 210 which I'm going to discuss on my, later on my special procedures, quality analytic control, double indicator titrations method at least three times per week, 
This test will indicate the accumulation of non-mercaptan acidic compounds such as hydrogen sulfide, naphthenic acids, alphatic acids or carbon dioxide or from the regeneration air and other non-regenerative acidic material. These materials lower the concentration of the free sodium hydroxide and thus the ability of the caustic to extract mercaptans when the caustic exceeds 20% spent a portion of the caustic should be withdrawn from the unit as spent caustic and replaced with a fresh 1.2 specific gravity caustic soda. Okay, next is a caustic gravity. Okay, number three, caustic gravity. The caustic gravity made by hydrometer should be checked daily. The accumulation of neutral salts or sediments will tend to increase the solution gravity. Operation with dirty high specific rate caustic is one a cause of caustic carryover in the hydrocarbon leaving the extractor. Periodically, as determined by the experience, some caustic must be purged from the system and replaced with fresh caustic to prevent excessive accumulation of such materials. Large changes in the gravity will be due to dilution of the caustic with water. Small daily increase in the gravity indicate that the hydrocarbon and regeneration air are carrying out some water. Gravity adjustment can be made when deemed necessary by adding water or strong caustic as the case may require. Okay, next we are going to discuss mercaptide concentration. Okay, number four, mercaptide concentration. The regenerated caustic should be checked daily for mercaptide and sulfide. Sufficient air should be used to maintain the mercaptide sulfur in the regenerated caustic between 0.003 to 0.018% or 30 to 100 ppm. Maintaining a small amount ensures better catalyst dispensability in the aqueous caustic Thus, any tendency for cutters to settle at the disulfide caustic interface in the disulfide separator is reduced. If overoxidation operating condition exists, the whole cutters inventory could eventually settle and remain at the sulfide separator liquid liquid interface. Also, the presence of mercaptide indicates that no oxygen is present in the caustic and therefore cannot be indirectly introduced with the caustic into the extractor, which would result in mercaptine conversion to disulfides in the extractor. Since disulfides are all soluble, the total sulfur of the hydrocarbon product would increase. Okay. Okay. Catalyst con concentrations. Number fifth. The catalyst makeup rate is routine based on performance and change only when tests indicate a need. Catalyst is always added when fresh caustic is added. Frequently analysis of the caustic solution will establish the frequency of the caustic solution maintenance. The catalyst addition procedure we are going to discuss later on my special procedure series. Okay, regenerated caustic from disulfide separator. Make a visual check to see that the caustic is a free of intent or disulfide. Make a weekly determination of acids oil content by measuring the volume of acid oil liberated when us sample of caustic is neutralized with mineral acid. If the acid oil content exceeds about 10 to 12 percent, it may cause interference with the caustic flow in the extractor. If experience proves that to be the case, some caustic may be replaced on a faster cycle to control accumulation of acid oil in the Marax caustic. The regenerated caustic from the disulfide separator should be analyzed for extractable sulfur using UOP393 
procedure as a check on the disulfide separation efficiency. It can be assumed that all of the extractable sulfur in the caustic will be removed as the unit is equipped with washing step as called the naphtha washing. Okay, sand filter. Backwash from TAM to TAM may be used to restore and to relieve a plugging if scale or rust has accumulated on the top of the sand. When a 14 kPa kilopascal or 2 psa pressure drop drops, the sand filter should be backwashed. Back flushing procedures are included in my special procedure series, which I'm going to discuss later stage. Caustic carried into sand filter slowly etches the sand and may in time to reduce effectiveness as a colasser. If this is suspected to be the case, the sand should be replaced. Okay, next I'm going to discuss optimization process. Okay, optimization process switching unit. Some operating parameters are not under direct control in the Marax unit. Number one, hydrocarbon flow rate hydrocarbon quality and hydrocarbon temperature. The Marex unit operator should alert the operator in the other area so that corrective action can be taken. The operating parameters under direct control of the Marex unit are number one, caustic and hydrocarbon ratio, caustic origination temperature, catalyst makeup, caustic concentration and air injection flow rate. Okay, first I'm going to discuss air injection what it basically demands it. Okay, air injection. The primary operating variable for max unit control is in the air injection. The required air rate is based on the sulfur loading. Therefore, it will change for every change in hydrocarbon feed rate or feed mercantile content. The shake test as in the my pressure project will add operations in determining the necessary adjustment to the unit. Confirmation of the proper air rate is given by caustic mercaptide analysis 30 to 100 ppm mercaptide as a result of keeping the mercaptide content within this range. The vent gas oxygen content should be 10 to 12 volume percent. Another reason a high oxygen content should be avoided. In addition to maintaining a concentrations of mercaptide in the circulated caustic, is that high O2, high oxygen in the vent gas leads to corrosion in the stake of the disulfide separator. Okay, next, caustic and hydrocarbon ratio. Okay, the caustic and hydrocarbon ratio should be kept as constant as possible and change only infrequently when indicator of our minimum product sulfur contact. Optimization of extraction efficiency is primarily a question of determining the optimum caustic hydrocarbon ratio and flow rate. Insufficient caustic flow will result in insufficient dilutions of mercaptide in the circulating caustic and excessive mercaptide in the product. Excessive caustic flow will result in excessive transfer of disulfide oil to the product and high re-entry sulfur. One must maintain a sufficient low carbon and catalyst ratio to minimize re-entry of the sulfur yet also maintain sufficient high catalyst and carbon to minimize mercaptan sulfur. To determine the optimum a ratio of carbon and catalyst plant operation should be correlated against a minimum product mercaptan sulfur plus re-entry sulfur analysis using UOP method 393 to analyze for disulfide oil content in the regenerated caustic and UOP method 163 to analyze a mercaptan sulfur in the hydrocarbon. Okay, hydrocarbon fluoride. Operation at a low hydrocarbon flow rate will result in a poorer contact which will reduce mercaptan extraction efficiency. This will require a high catalyst hydrocarbon ratio for compensation and will result in higher re-entry sulfur. It is impossible to maintain the same 
design mercantile sulfur reentry sulfur content at lower than desired affinities. The optimum catalyst hydrocarburetion for the minimum mercantile a plus reentry sulfur must be determined by applied operations addition. Every effort should be made to adjust the instrumentation controlling the extractor feed rate to give the steady for flow rate possible feed rate fluctuations will result in difficulty in sustain optimum performance. Okay, how to cover temperature. The higher temperature allows to decrease the solubility of the mercantiles in caustic. Theoretically, 5 degrees Celsius or 9 degrees Fahrenheit increase in temperature will result in a 10% reduction in the overall equilibrium coefficient. Although design extraction efficiency is achieved at 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees F, lower temperature result in increased extraction efficiency. However, a lower limit is reached where entrainment of the caustic has may become a significant operating a problem. Next is the oxidizer temperature. Okay, oxidizer temperature. A small heater is provided to heat the caustic about 46 to 60 degree Celsius or 115 to 100 degree F. The oxidizer should be run at as low as temperature as possible while still maintaining a desired degree of regeneration. It is only in the rare cases when oxidizer is Overloaded that a temperature above 52 degrees C will be necessary. Okay, feed composition. A sudden increase in the product mercantile content under otherwise stable will controlled conditions may result from change in feed stock composition, which introduce higher boiling mercantiles. This can only be remedied by changes in the upstream equipment operation. If the feedstock cannot be altered for some reason, a new optimum that is called a catalyst hydrocarbon ratio must be determined by plant operation adjustment for minimum product mercantile sulfur plus reentry into the system. Okay, extraction unit operating guidelines. The hydrocarbon product specification injection a caustic specification and other operating guidelines. This presents a minimum recommendations for an adequate quality control program for analytic methods. Um, later stage I'm going to discuss quality and analytical control including sampling procedure. If you can see on my left hand side are steam components and right hand side is recommended guidelines. First regenerated marex caustic. If we, you can find the left hand side a gravity tanbium, the sulfide at zero, mercaptide at 30 to 100 ppm, disulfide 200 ppm, thiosulfate 1% maximum, total alkalinity 6% minimum, percent spent cutters that is 10 to 20%, check test 30 to 2 minutes, and so on. These are extracting unit or guidelines. Okay, as I've discussed earlier, the operating parameters not under direct control in the MARIC unit, including the hydrocarbon flow rate, hydrocarbon quality, and hydrocarbon feed temperature. The MANIC operator must alert the operator in other areas if corrective action is required with these atoms. Number one, air injection rate, caustic injection rate, and pretreatment. Okay, first I'm going to discuss air injection rate. Okay, air injection rate. The air rate is adjusted based on the amount of mercantile sulfur in the manic reactor feed. The figure demonstrates the required air injection rate as a function of the feed rate and mercantile content for one to five times stoichiometric air. The amount of access here should be minimized. However, formation of a separate air phase at the top of the MANAC reactor or due to access air injection can cause a channeling to dwell in the charcoal bed. An air phase collecting in the reactor will gradually displace more and more hydrocarbon from the bed, promoting a channeling. 
This channeling continues even when the air phase is subsequently eliminated. Sufficient pressure must be maintained in the reactor to completely dissolve all of the air injected into the hydrocarbon. Channeling essentially reduced residents at time resulting in a decrease in microcapton conversions. Therefore, as a part of routine operation, a reactor overhead vent line should be checked frequently for evidence of the separate air phase. If air is found, it should be vented. The reactor pressure should be increased or air injection rate should be decreased in order to alleviate the problem. Okay, next is the caustic injection rate. Okay, caustic injection rate. Sufficient caustic should be injected to maintain a pH in the range of 9 to 12 at the reactor or drain port or plate. About 2 to 5 a ppm of sodium hydroxide at caustic concentration, 3 to 5 degree bombs, 2 to 3 weight percent is normally sufficient. This caustic injection pump should be checked frequently to ensure that the sufficient caustic is being pumped to the reactor. The manic unit product should never have more than a 1 of weight per ppm of sodium. The low sodium content of the product is favored by injection of the lowest possible caustic flow rate and weakest sodium hydrous sorption concentration. Consist with a low product, peroxide number and sodium hydroxide based on hydrocarbon feed combined to increase the likelihood of high sodium content in the product. Second is hydrocarbon quality and flow rate. Hydrocarbon quality and flow rate. The residence time or cutter's contact time is inversely proportional to the feed rate. An increased feed rate may not allow a sufficient cutter's contact time to obtain acceptable product quality, particularly when some deactivation has occurred. Mercantons that are difficult to treat, higher molecules weight, more highly branched, requires more residence time than those that are easy to treat. Therefore, when the hydrocarbon disulfates and quantities increase, the feed rate must sometimes be decreased to maintain same product mercantons content. Okay, catus deactivation. The surfactant Convolutions on the fixed bed catches result in gradually deactivation whenever the feedstock contains surfactant compounds. These are additives used in the crude oil production. Recovery and even the processing. For example, certain cohesion inhibitions habitats used in fractionation cotton. When catches a bed, deactivation is so severe as to require reduced a feed rate, none of other control parameter will return the unit to satisfactory operations. Reactivation is required. The reactivation procedure, well, I'm going to discuss my special procedure series, adjustment of the reactor temperature or use of the Marex or plus catus activity promoter can extend the catus life before reactivation of the catus bed is required. Okay, first is a temperature, then we will discuss the additive temperature. The sweetening reactions proceeds at a normal rundown temperature 30 to 45 degrees Celsius. The manic unit is normally operated at the lowest temperature that will provide a sweetening with a reasonable amount of excess air 1.5 to 2 times theoretically. However, as catalyst bed deactivation occurs, it is possible to raise the normal feed temperature in increments of 3 degree Celsius or 5 degree Fahrenheit to offset lowest activity until a time permits a shutdown or reactivation of the catalyst bed. Number two, Marex Plus additive injection. Marex Plus is a catalyst promoter and can be used to extend the operating life of the Marex unit. Marex Plus is supplied in 1250 liters or 330 US gallons drums as part of the cycle or drum system. The use of the cycle drums eliminates the concerns of disposing or non-returnable drums. The solution is injected directly 
from the drum to the feed stream using the, a small metering pump. Typically, dosage rates 10 to 20 a ppm. Injection procedure is simple and very similar to the injection of the caustic in the Manax fixed bed sitting unit. Okay, next the feed and product stream specification. Okay, this is my last slide feed and product stream composition. First, uh, on the left hand side, stream components. Uh, first, injection caustic, gravity 3 to 5 a degree bomb and total alkalinity 2 to 3 weight percent. Injection rate 2 to 10 a ppm, sodium hydroxide maximum 20 ppm. Uh, compositions uh, less than 14 kg sodium hydroxide upper a meter cube and treated product cracked gasolines peroxide number less than a 3 existing gum uh, less than 2 mg per 100 milliliter and aqueous disposal a ph 9 to 10 depends on the feedstock total alkalinity less than 35 gram per liter and gasoline feed temperature 38 to 50 degrees celsius and air injection rate 1.3 newton meter cube per hour okay uh, conclusion uh, today we have discussed normal operation operating a parameter and process optimization uh, next topic i'm going to discuss uh, the normal shutdown procedure and temporary emergency Okay, these are a few references here. Together, everyone achieve more. Please send me your feedback, comments at t.musu.dr at path.edu. Thank you very much for your patience.